how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you once again. Today, I am going to be sharing with you guys the best decks to reach Masters within September in Legends of Runeterra. I would like to add, there is going to be a link to all the deck lists and deck codes down in the description below. So be sure to go find which one is suitable for you. I'm going to go through each of these nine decks here, giving a brief description and a little bit of thoughts about the deck and if I would recommend it to you. I'm going to be using statistics from Mobileux to justify each and every one of my decisions for each of these decks. However, I am going to be doing this within the Masters rank. That's where I believe that the, the win rates and performance of the decks means the most. But these are going to perform just as well, if not better, at lower ranks as you climb up. Each and every one of these decks is going to get you to Masters if you play enough with them. So the first deck I'm going to share with you guys is one of a very few new decks that actually is finding good performance. Aurelian Soul and Lux Targon in Demacia. This is going to be the Aurelian Soul deck I recommend to any player right now if that is what you would like to play. However, if you are more interested in climbing and if you're at a lower rank, I would not recommend this deck. The, the, the games can be very time consuming. Also, they can be very rewarding though. This is a deck that requires you to put your thinking hat on, take your time with each turn, and you can really set up some really amazing plays and just be super oppressive if played correctly. So, you know, as you start to get close to certain milestones, certain thresholds, you know, maybe you've gone for your last few games trying to get into Masters, I would recommend this. Um, if you feel comfortable, obviously a bit of practice, but you know, still a really good deck, one that requires a bit of thinking. Uh, brief description would be that it's kind of a control deck. It's basically a control deck. You look still at the early game, get some value with Lux. Lux acts as a win condition. It really installs your ultimate late game engine if things turn to shit. But uh, one that can be piloted in a sense that it can play for a bit more aggro. As we do have a somewhat of a curve every now and then. And you can do some pretty stupid stuff with the Remembrance and like single combat, concerted strike, etc. Twisted Fate and Swain, Noxus in build water, mid-range, aggressive, control. It's got all the aspects to it. This deck can play so many different ways, it's kind of ridiculous. But to keep it simple, this is very much a control deck, a very much a slow burn deck where by the end of the game, your opponent, if you get there and your opponent hasn't done enough, you're just going to beat them with Leviathan. Simply like this deck is just really stupid. The lockdown's kind of crazy. And it is this like, it's a deck that is completely hard to counter. There isn't really a counter out there. The ability to like shift your game strategy around on the fly is a little insane. This is a deck that I would recommend for a lot of players, no matter what rank you are. The The game time's reasonable. The finishes are consistent. It is a very insane deck and one that is probably going to oppress the meta for a while unless they make a few, a few changes to some of these cards. I personally believe Swain is quite overtuned and Leviathan as well is quite overtuned. And then you've got the other powerful cards like Riptide Rex and Maker Rain. Things start to get pretty ridiculous, but very strong deck unless anything changes to these specific cards. A really good one to pilot. You can play aggressive. You can kind of curve out, play your stuff. You can turn into a fast burn deck if you have to by you know, not even making it to your Riptide Rex and Leviathan, just kind of getting there with your chip damage from your board state to like Noxian Fervors over the top and uh, kegs into making rains can sometimes get you there. But a really strong deck, uh, one that I would recommend to any new or beginner player as well. It might have a little bit of complexity to it, but one that if you can learn, it will teach you really good fundamentals of the game and you will improve really quickly. Alternatively, if you want to be more focused on the aggressive side of things, then again, another build one or a Noxus deck. Misfortune, GP, GP is the finisher in this deck. This is essentially a burn aggro deck, however you would like to title it. One that is a bit more simpler to pilot. I would recommend it just as much as the Swain and Twisted Fate deck. But you know, this one is a little bit simpler, but can be less punishing if your opponent kind of deals with your stuff. However, you play on curve, you burn your opponent, and you beat them over the top with Decimate if you have to. Alternatively, Captain Farron is a great finisher as well, but a very good deck and one that I'd recommend to any player that is looking to climb through the ranks as quick as they can. Now, this is a deck that apparently boasts an incredible win rate, probably because it's very strong. However, I'm going to say that I am not very good with this deck, so I don't know why it's so good, but it is good, okay, guys? So if you want to play a very strong mid-range deck, you cannot go wrong with Misfortune and Quinn in Scouts. Misfortune with like the challenging units and curving out into Quinn can be very oppressive. 
you stick a board, you rally against those greedy Aurelian soul decks, you usually just win the game. Um, against other aggressive decks, it's very much a race. They can burn you over the top, you can beat them faster with units. So the ability to protect your units as well with the Rangers to Resolve is quite oppressive. This card's a little insane, one that I would hope gets some sort of tuning in the future, as I believe it is very much over-tuned. But yeah, finish the game, you've got Bannerman in this list. It's very simple, okay guys? You play your one, you play your two, three, four, and then you rally, single combat for value, and then you win the game. The next deck is going to be very similar to the Scouts version, but one that still boasts a very strong uh, play weight and win rate is actually going to be Lulu Shen. I think this deck oftentimes goes under the radar because it might be a little bit more outshined by Misfortune and Quinn in general performance, but this is still a very powerful deck. And if you don't want to play this version with Misfortune and Quinn, you can very much play this version with Lulu and Shen. It's probably a little bit more complex because you have to like use a support synergy. You've kind of got to like like plan out who's going to get the barrier, who's not going to get the barrier, who's and then like really set up for powerful turns. Um, I guess the only difference between this and that deck with Misfortune and Quinn is that this deck has barrier synergy. So, you know, there's like the ability to like, I guess you would argue that if these two face off in a mirror matchup, you might put your money a little bit on the deck that has barriers because barriers can be quite powerful, especially on units that don't require you to, that don't, that don't require you to play another card like Shen provides you a barrier almost immediately. And, you know, you've got some elusive action here with the Young Witch. In general, both are very powerful mid-range decks, so you can go for either one. It just depends if you have, like, you know, a certain attraction to Lulu and Shen, or if you're more interested in Misfortune and Quinn. Another deck that should not definitely be slept on is going to be Draven and Jinx discard aggro. This alongside Nightfall, which I'll talk about in a second, are the aggro decks right now. You know, the real cookie cutter, you play your stuff really quickly, you try and burn your opponent as fast as you can. This deck just doesn't run out of gas so, and if piloted correctly, it can do some pretty oppressive things. This is probably going to be like one of the most difficult decks to play, as you kind of have to like, you know, play with the discards, play with the uh, Jinx and Draven flipping this and that, and you know, setting up a turn or two ahead, and planning for like augmented experiments that come down and refill your hand. Uh, we are recently using Crowd Favorite too, um, as we need these kind of like big units to deal with like the uh, greedy Aurelian Soul stuff, where cards like this don't really get punished. Uh, very strong list, one that requires a bit more thinking, probably on the same level as Aurelian Soul, but one that is just, it's just a really good deck, guys. Go and play this one, I recommend it. One of my favorite decks within this meta is actually going to be Shadow Wilds and Targon, Diana, Nocturne, Nightfall, Aggro. Um, between this and the Draven Discard, I'm going to simply recommend that you play the Piltover and Zorn Draven Discard Jinx. However, if that's a bit too complex for you, um, this could also be a deck that is just as rewarding. I'm not going to say this deck is easy, if not like, because they're both quite difficult to play. I would probably argue Draven Jinx is a bit more harder to play. But Nightfall Aggro is very much a deck I would still recommend. Um, it's a bit more... It's simpler, it's not as hard to play as what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is this deck is not as hard to play. However, it does require a bit more thinking than just slapping down your dudes 1, 2, 3, 4 and just hitting your opponent in the face. You do need to plan out your turns. You do need to kind of focus on the Nightfall because Nightfall, if you don't know, is a mechanic that requires you to get the bonus effect if you've played a card before it. So it does require some snap decisions here and there, deciding when to go in and what cards to play and when. It also requires somewhat of planning ahead for Nocturne because Nocturne, you need to have attacked with your Nightfall allies. So it's one to think about too, guys. So if you're thinking about swinging or not swinging to try and like conserve your board, sometimes you've just got to swing so you can start to flip Nocturne. And uh, sometimes you have to decide as well with what cards because you're not going to always have a perfect hand, right? So you have to think about, okay, I need to activate Nightfall this turn. But I'm probably going to have to use another Nightfall unit to activate that Nightfall. Which Nightfall is the most highest priority? That's a question you'll be asking yourself a lot. In some matchups too, it's like, okay, my win condition might have to come through Lunari Priestess. So you kind of have to plan for that a little bit too. Uh, oftentimes you can just play aggressive and try and end the game through Atrocity. Every now and then you'll have to kind of like shift to a slight more value oriented strategy. Look for the Lunari Priestess and the Doom Beast to try and do an alternative uh, finisher. But regardless, a very fun deck, one that I would still recommend at any rank, but probably one that's, if mastered, not going to boast as much of a win rate of Draven Jinx if mastered. Still one to bring up though, still one I would recommend. A deck that this doesn't seem to ever leave the meta. <laughs> uh, 
Shadow Isles and Freehold in Dua. Um, we had that new card to come out called Passage Unearned. It didn't seem to put a stop to this kind of archetype and I don't think Hush is going to be enough to really stop this. Because you're not just having to worry about Hushing and Dua, you have to like worry about like the rest of the board killing you early as well. Having a Hush for Endura is great, but sometimes your opponent's going to beat you down uh, with this aggressive Endura list. Uh, we only run Callisto as our champion card, this is the list I would recommend the most. And then you just play your stuff on curve, you slap your opponent in the face, you try and beat them down early. Sometimes before Endura, sometimes with Endura, most of the time actually with Endura though. Regardless, um, pretty simple deck to pilot, there's like not really any punish for playing wrong because you can alternatively always win the game with Endura. You just literally play your dudes and just kill them off and then hit your opponent in the face. Uh, there's not really much to think about. The strategy is always pretty much the same. And the punishments for making misplays aren't too dramatic. So this is definitely a deck I would recommend at almost every rank and when you're first starting. And it's relatively budget friendly at the moment because like you're still we're still using like most of the old cards and we've only got Callista now. It's cheaper than it was before. But regardless, another deck to recommend, another deck to pilot you to masters if you would like. Last but not least, I'm actually going to share a budget deck that I can recommend you guys climb to masters with. Uh, shout outs to Swim, mostly for putting in the hard work and efforts for making this deck to what it is today. But one that does seriously prove to be a good deck, not even the fact that it's uh, budget or not. Uh, this list right here is another cookie cutter, aggressive Noxus and Shadow Wilds deck that utilizes spiders. So you're gonna have most of those cards when you first begin the game. And then you just beat your opponent at the end with Decimate or Noxian Fervor if need be. A couple of new tools here is going to be Doom Beast and Stagonian Onlooker, as well as Stalking Shadows. They're just kind of going to do a lot of crazy things towards the later half of the game. You can have huge swings with your fierce units, and you can utilize Frenzied Skitterer to reduce your the attack of your opponent's units so that you might kill your opponent with more fearsome strategy. So it's a really cool deck, um, one that's proving to be quite effective at all ranks. and. If you are on a budget and you're looking to get into the game and get some wins, this is going to be the way to go. Hey, so I shared with you guys some of the best decks to reach Masters in September. Now, I want to do something a little different. I just want to give you my general thoughts about the meta, you know, the expansion, etc. Ruterra in general, without any sort of certain script, I'm just going to spit out whatever comes to my mind first. And I want to say with the release of the Targon expansion, one of the biggest wins for the expansion was the fact that Nightfall aggro, Dino, and Nocturne become somewhat competitively viable. You know, uh, as the as we were reviewing the cards, as we saw the, re uh, the reveals and stuff, people, we, re we all, let's be honest, we all kind of slept on Nocturne and Dino to some extent, at least like this specific archetype. Like people saw some potential in Dino, not as much saw some potential in Nocturne, but this deck existing, performing as good as it is, I am very happy to see Huge win for the expansion, huge win for Runeterra to bring out a new concept like this. Uh, I guess the secondary win is going to be the fact that Aurelion Soul is competitively viable. Um, we all kind of thought there's no way. I, my personal opinion was like Ezreal is just going to be the ultimate value engine, uh, but that wasn't actually enough and Aurelion Soul can come down quicker than you think. And um, that leads me to my next point. <laughs> That is the Masters meta, which I'm probably not as happy with right now because there's two decks I see most days. Some form of Noxus Bilgewater, some form, form of uh, Targon and Demacia playing Aurelion Soul. The problem is like the Noxus Bilgewater deck, they're playing it because like it's really good against Aurelion Soul and it's pretty good all around. Uh, this deck specifically just causes an issue for me because it is extremely uh, polarizing. And what I mean is probably more oppressive. Um, you can't really counter this. I don't think there's slow enough strategies to actually maintain against this. Like the ability for this deck to have such a strong early game into such a strong late game is really tedious. Like Leviathan, Riptide Rex, and Swain. Like, man, it's so crazy. And like, it's like a really greedy burn aggro that just works, right? So the problem is it's like, because this deck just works, um, then yeah, it can be quite hard to deal with. And sometimes like, I feel like unless I'm playing Noxus Bilgewater, then I'm just, I'm limiting my options of winning, which I, what that means is like, 
for me to play in the Masters meta, I have to be happy to play mirror matchups. And I don't like playing mirror matchups, but at the same time, I like playing different decks, but that can be quite easily punished by Noxus and Bilgewater. So what I mean to say is, I'm kind of sick of some form of Noxus and Bilgewater, whether it's uh, Misfortune GP, whether it's Twisted Fate Swain, whether it's Twisted Fate GP, etc. You get the point. At the moment, it feels like like Riptide Rex, Leviathan are just like oppressive, very strong. And I would hope that within the near future, something changes. I would be concerned though, if this kind of gets touched a little bit, that we might go into the Aurelian Soul meta and that's going to be like Resident Sleeper. We're going to be playing like, you know, 40 to 50 minute games, playing Aurelian Soul mirror matchups. That's an exaggeration, but you get the point because if they do something to Ezreal as well, then you know, late game is going to be about who builds the most greedy deck. And that's kind of going to be like, yeah, a bit of Resident Sleeper. But besides that, I am generally pretty happy with the meta, even though we may or may not have got that many new decks. The fact that we got Nightfall Aggro, which is pretty new. The fact that we got some forms of Aurelian Soul, very new. That is a big win. Of course, not every champion that comes out in expansion is going to be competitively viable and people are going to stick to the decks in the past that have worked and update them. That's a fine. I'm just glad we got Nightfall Aggro and some form of Aurelian Soul competitively viable. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching the video. And if you have any thoughts or questions or, you know, just anything, anything at all, man, jump down in the comments, start a conversation. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you next time.